Hey, what's up guys and welcome to another Coffee Break episode. Today we got a comedian in the house, who, who, Julio. Um, someone I met, you know, like three days ago, but we just kicked it right away and um, it's a privilege. You know, it's an honor to have you here, bro. Thank you. Another New Yorican from the Bronx, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> from Manhattan, oh. the, well, you go by the Latin from okay. Manhattan, right? Yes, yes, that's my um, name. So man. it's so good, man. Thanks. Um, it's, it's good to have you here. Welcome to my humble hey, th studio. Thank you, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate that. Man. Yeah, this, this is cool, man. Um, but without further ado, before we even go into the interview, yeah. I want to give a thanks to today's sponsor. Today's video was sponsored by Great Coffee. Premium, 100% Arabica beans from Colombia. Why is it so great? Because there's no one in the middle. It's directly from Colombia to the States, roasted fresh locally in Bristol, Connecticut, and delivered straight to you. Visit greatcoffee.co and order your bag. And that's G-R-8coffee.co. We have available in half a pound bags and full pound bags, just like this one. Thank you for watching. My brother, how do you like the coffee? Ah, this is great, great coffee. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, excellent. This is great, excellent. bro. And I'm a coffee guy, I love coffee. I'm yeah. a, you know, Puerto Ricans, you know how we are. We, we <laughs> always need a <laughs> cafe, right? we need, cafe, we, we need some coffee, That's man. That's the way it is, you know? So what's going on, brother? How you how you been, man? It's been like a um, couple of days, right? Like, what's it like a week, a maybe week. to be exact, since about I a met week. you? Yeah, I figured about a week. <clears throat> um, uh, you know, everything everything's good. I mean, my perspective in life is it's to have fun, man. You know, you, you gotta have fun. I feel life is a gift. Right. So every second, you gotta take advantage of every everything you can get because you know it's gonna change. Yeah. And you know, it, it, one day we're not gonna be here no more. Right. Right. But, right. I want to make sure that I'm having a good time. When I see St. Pete, he's going to have, you had a good time. Oh, I sure did. <laughs> yep. So, you know, that, yeah, it is. Uh, but this is, a, this is a great studio. You have a you have nice, great coffee, by the way. No, you know, thanks. Like, I appreciate uh, that, bro. Uh, no, yeah, yeah it's, 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 like, it's, uh, it's uh, um, if you saw the, the, the sponsor, you know what I'm saying? It's sponsored by the, the coffee channel. I um, see. Okay. By, by the coffee brand. All right. So we're, we're good nice. here, man. And, and you got into, um, um, Let's give a shout out to, to to my little partner right here, my dog Banner, who's always wants to be a, a part of the show. But when, how how long have you been in comedy, right? So I met you a week ago. Mm -hmm. You 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 came across. You know what I'm saying. You were listening to to I some just... merengue or some salsa there, and I was like, wait a second, there's a Puerto Rican around here. I gotta I gotta see who, who this guy is, and it was you. You know, you popped up like a little, you know, like a little uh, a squirrel well, or something like that out of nowhere. It, I do that sometimes. Um... I'm an old salsero. I, I like I like salsa. I, I was a dancer for a lot of years, mm -hmm. and um, you know, living in New York, it was always a thing to go out. You know, you mm -hmm. go out, you go dancing, and you know, the whole idea is really to have fun. I'm, mean, you know, it's of course, you know, you try to pick up chicks. You know, that's <laughs> really the, the deal. But that never worked out for me. <laughs> it was always like, nah, like, you dance real good. Oh, that's about it. Maybe, yeah. nah. But anyway, um, salsa was always my my thing. For a lot of years, I grew up with it. I figured, you know, like let me do that. But I was a little more diverse. Yeah. I listened to Motown. I listened to you know, all kind of soul. I listened to rock and roll. Okay. I listened to classics, some of the classics, and I really like country. <laughs> My brother likes country. Yeah, I like country music, and they were like country music. I was a fresh air kid, so I used to go to this, you know, to this people over there in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. And they were in the middle of Amish country. But they wasn't Amish. They were like, you know. Yeah. And uh, they used to listen to country. So that the, her son really didn't like it. I don't like country. But then I started listening to it. I'm like, eh, it's pretty cool. I, I, you know, I, I kind of enjoyed it. Yeah. And it didn't bother me. You know, I used to go to that little bluegrass okay. concerts with them. And then one time we went to um, the the Yo Opry, the Opry in, in, in Tennessee. Okay. And um, I was like, wow, these guys are like really good. I, you know, like the talent was amazing. It's yeah. like, I, I just like musicians. I like music. Gotcha. I, mean, I think music is, uh, you know, the, the language of all. I haven't all met people. a Latino yet that doesn't like music, especially a New Yorican, right? Oh, that's, no, that's like music is In the... Manhattan, in New York, in the city, there, there was always music going on. Oh, really? yeah. It's like, you know, I, I, am, I, am, I admire musicians. I, yeah. I think musicians are, you know, even though I'm a stand-up comedian and they say, oh, that's the hardest profession. 
it's not, I don't, I never saw it as a profession. I thought it wasn't even a profession. I had no idea. And then I, uh, I saw Eddie Murphy do Delirious. Yeah. And I said, I could do that. Yeah. <laughs> and at, at what, at what age were you? Oh, I was already, I was 33. I mean, my kids. When you got into the comedy scene? Yeah, I was 33 years old. And, wow. Uh, I said, I'm going to do that. And my friend, you know, Marine Corps friend, he's like, yeah, right. I said, I'm going to do it. So I went and um, I, I met this jazz musician um, named Dave Hubbard. And okay. Dave Hubbard used to play in this place called um, the Jazz Cultural Center on West 48th Street in New York. And I told him, you think I could do, you know, I could open up a show for you? You know, he goes, well, what is it you want to do? He was very calm, one of those. He was a saxophone player, an alto sax. He goes, well, what is it you want to do? The way he used to talk, like real, you know how jazz music, they yeah. talk like very low. And um, he, I was introduced to him by a guy named Tim Shepard. Tim Shepard was a, uh, a jazz musician. He was a singer. And um, I told him, do you think I could do a show for you? And he goes, is that what you want to do? That's not a problem. And he goes, you know, comedies are very, very hard. Because I used to watch Richard Pryor and, and they make it look so easy, right. right? So I went out there and I, I told him, yeah, I'll, I'll bring people. So my first show, I told him, I will bring the people, so I made my own tickets. I, I produced my own little tickets. Okay. And I sold almost 80 tickets. <laughs> 80 tickets. On one shot. One shot. I was like, all the people I knew, you know, hey, you want to come see me? I'm going to do a show. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Man, that was a Saturday night. I never forgot. No, Friday night. And, um, I, you know, it was pretty packed. He was shocked because he didn't. He figured, well, yeah, okay, this like guy's unexpected. new, like, but he didn't, he, they don't get that many people there for that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh, I bombed. It was bad. Whew. It was brutal. <laughs> I had no, no direction. I had no, I had subjects, but they were back and forth. It wasn't unison. It was bad. It was like, it was horrible. And that was your first? That was my first show ever. And um, it was uh, a month before my daughter was born. Wow. That's why I know how many years I've been doing this. Okay. Uh, my daughter was born that June. I, this was in May. So about a month before. She was, she was born June 18th. So I, I did it like a month before. Yeah. Um, in 19, um, was it 1987? 87, 87 if I believe. And um, she, when she was born... I was like, oh man, because I thought I was going to get a boy because I had a boy already. And I'm like, wow. And I was like, okay, now I'm really inspired to do some comedy. Yeah. But I remember that first day, my friends walked up to me and said, wow, you're really bad. <laughs> and the, and the, the exact quote was, you suck. <laughs> and I said, really? But thanks for coming. You know, I'm having a show tomorrow. Would you like to come? <laughs> So I already knew right there, it didn't matter whether I failed or didn't fail. That's good. I was going to keep doing what I do it. And because you already, you like, that I, was something that you I really, broke, really I, wanted to pursue. Absolutely. And I broke into it. And then from there for 10 years, I mean, let me see, from 87 to about 96, because we moved to Florida uh, about 94. Okay. So, you know, I tried to pursue it also in Florida, but not knowing, I mean, I don't know the business. Once you change regions, it's like starting at zero. Mm. So nobody knows you. You really got to go out. And, yeah, yeah. You know, you're a comedian. Sure, you're a comedian. Yeah, yeah. And, and you invite people. You do a couple of shows. And then in 96, I mean, it, it was kind of like a bittersweet. Yeah. You know, because the Yankees won the World Series. I'm a Yankee fan. Yeah, you know? me too. Like, Let's I'm go, big baby. Big Yankee fan. Big Yankee fan. And um, I, I got into depression, you know. I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a veteran. I'm a Vietnam vet, and it was like, it was like really hard. I didn't know what it was. I just yeah. one of those things. At the same time, you know, got divorced too. So, okay, so you got <laughs> so, double whammies. Yeah, I was, I was getting wham left and right. So I was like really, really depressed. Yeah. And then, you know, my mother called me out of nowhere, and hey, you come to Puerto Rico. So I actually lived in Puerto Rico for a couple of years, oh. and that was like, that was another experience because. I'm Puerto Rican, but I'm not. I'm a New Yorker. I'm not a Puerto Rican. Right. So in Puerto Rico, you know, you're not Puerto Rican. <laughs> so not everybody. But hey, afuera. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Well, you know, I didn't bother me that much because all right. But it was like a new culture. I lived in Vieques, Puerto Rico, wow. which is a little island. Yeah. And I had 
it was great. I mean, it was like a relaxation. I got my mind. My mother told me, don't work, don't do nothing. I just want you to relax. Right. And I felt kind of guilty. I always worked all my life. I'm, right. not, I'm not used to just living off somebody. You right. know what I mean? So, you know, and then that's, you know, that was my, my roll back. And from that point, I did, you know, I started doing comedy again. And so while you were in Puerto Rico, you, you didn't, you didn't try to like, you know. No, that first year, do no. comedy. So you, it was more of like a recalibration for you. Yeah, I had to recalibrate. I, had, I was like, you know, remember, I just got divorced. I, yeah. I really didn't call my kids a lot. And that's something that I, I promised myself that I would never do. Yeah. And it was like. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But. Yeah. You know, you keep going. Yeah, yeah, bro. And you came back, and and you you went through it. Ah, right? uh, yeah, man. Um, it's hard, but yeah. No, you keep going. Yeah, yeah. But you know, like out here, I never really prayed before. Yeah. And that helped. Yeah. <laughs> A lot. Yeah. <laughs> No, nah, no, nah, no problem, bro. It's all good, man. Yeah. Anyway. Yep. God is good, I'm bro. I'm back. I'm back. Yeah, yeah. No, you're back so, and you're ready to attack, bro. Oh, yeah, yeah. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. You know what I'm doubt. saying? You yeah. got your kids, right? They, yeah. You, you, you speak to your kids. You yeah, yeah. My, yeah my, my kids are they're good people. Yeah. I mean, my daughter, my youngest one, she's, 30, she's 36. Yeah. And my son is 43. Yep. They're, they're great human beings, so... Yeah. All I can say is, you know, I was lucky in that aspect. Now, yeah. also, um, I got married again. Yeah. And that was a blessing also because yeah. I raised her daughter oh. and she's my other daughter. Wow, look at that. So, you know, like, you know, I kind of did that part and I felt like, oh, good. I'm, I'm accomplishing something because yeah. I felt like, you know, worthless. Yeah. But, you know, comedy is my thing. I, I love it. Yeah, I think. Yeah. Reaching people and making them laugh is it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. And it's, it's therapeutic also, I'm pretty sure, for you too. Oh, yeah. Right? I, I mean, absolutely. I mean, the point is, you know, like to see people have a good time yeah. because you initiated it. Yeah. It's a great thing. It's a yeah. great feeling. It's almost like, I don't need to get paid. I already got paid. Right, right, right. Because it, it's, it's yeah. fulfilling in a way. Yeah, it is. It is. It's so a, so when, when when you start doing comedy, you know, a lot of people, they, they do comedy and they have sets, right, that they create or prepare. Some people right. freestyle it probably, you know what I mean? But now when, when you do comedy, like, are you do you do comedy based on your experiences or, or just like on your own personal yeah. experiences? Or do you create like scenarios? I can create sagas, but basically it's mostly a one I experienced when I remember as growing up mm. being in New York. Because in New York, you know, you have all kind of cultures. You have, you know, you go white people, black people, Chinese yep. people, you know, Puerto Ricans, New Ricans, uh, you know, all kind, you know, Dominicans, and and it, the flavor by itself, kind of like tattooed me as a real New Yorker, because that's right. what New Yorkers do. You know, we're a melting pot of, right. of a lot of things. Yeah. And um, when I'm on stage, I'm not thinking of a routine. I'm thinking more of how to explain an experience and make it funny or right. make it humorous. Right. And um, no matter how bad it is, I mean, I, I could talk about just about any subject right. and have something to say about it. Because, um, you know, to be to be humorous, it's not the matter of, I thought stand-up to me was, you ever gone to a party and there's a funny guy that's there and he makes everybody laugh? That's what I thought stand-up was. Okay, gotcha. So it wasn't like a written, he didn't write it, it's just he just happened to be yeah, there and he's natural. a funny guy. Right. So I figured that's the way you do it. But when you're on stage, it's a completely, remember, you're going to go on cue to do this. You're right. not in a party, you're not, you know, people are not close to you. Right. But I deliver that somehow. I don't know, you know, like, yeah. you know, maybe it's um, the way I, I am. Maybe my personality is different. Right. And I think it's the matter of not being afraid to express yeah. you, your full, you know, like, like being naked. Yeah. And, um, you know, I learned how to, like, do that little by little. I, I'm, I'm probably more better at it now than I was 20 years ago. Right. So 20 years ago, I was, I, I was still afraid 
to do of that part. Right. I was still afraid to be, you know, the Julio, you know, the, the doubtful guy. I, I need to be the, you know, like yeah. I'm confident. You know, I could do anything. You right. know, like I couldn't. Do it. Yeah, yeah. So when you're vulnerable like that, people tend to say, "Wow, I wish I could do that." Right. Because it kind of relaxes you when you can, you know, once you tell the truth about yourself, yep. you don't need to prove anybody to any, anything to anybody. Like, right, that's you know, a good so point. It, it, becomes a, it, becomes a, it becomes a part of you that you don't mind being less than what people think. Right. You know, like when I talk about sex, oh, I'm a horrible. Yeah. I ain't a lover. I mean, I don't know. Like, yeah, yeah. Everybody, I'm a great lover. I don't know. Am I? It like, yeah. depends. I, I can't. I, I don't I don't question here yeah. when I'm finished. Oh, honey, so what do you think? Yeah. Uh, what was that? How about that? Did you? No. Okay. How about this? No, 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 no. So don't ask the question. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, like when you're finished. Oh, so how was I? Yeah. Like, well, you're all right. <laughs> All right, oh, you're okay. like, and you're like, that's kind of like hit you on your ego if you're a man, yeah. now, especially a, a, a Latin man. And it's funny because you know, like I, I grew up in the era where you know the black man was the one endowed, and the Latin man was the lover. Right, right. You know, but the good thing about being the Latin man. They don't talk about your size. <laughs> it's just you're a lover, so that's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that's good. You know, like if, yeah. you know, like they, they don't consider that. You know, so I used to like come up with routines like, you know, like well, the Chinese must be the greatest lovers in the world because they got 1.5 billion dollars. <laughs> you know, 1.5 billion people in that in that country. Something about somebody's doing something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> something is happening. Yeah. That you know, they must be real sexy out there. But you know, maybe it's me. Maybe it's not. But yeah. you know, I I I feel that. You know, people don't give other people credit because they stereotype a specific. Uh, yeah, you know, where they yeah. from. You know how they are. Uh -huh. No, I don't. I don't know. Yeah, it's just, I, I'm worrying about me right now. Yeah, yeah. Like I've been around the world, and, and right. generally people are kind of the same. Right. You know, people are the same. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, so, this is this so, is great. So now you 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 go to Puerto Rico. You have a certain you know a point of your life where it becomes really tough for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You you come back from Puerto Rico, you get recalibrated, uh -huh. um, you connect with your kids and all this other stuff, uh -huh. you know what I mean? That was kind of like tough on, on you and, and things. So now you come to Connecticut, you know? And when you get to, to Connecticut now, um, you're out here, what, for about 15 years now? 15, yeah, I've been here 15 years, yeah. So you come to Connecticut and you, wow. do com you do comedy out here? I do comedy out here, again. And um, it was a little hard again. Again, you're starting at zero. Right. So it's almost like, you know, three careers. Right. <laughs> so I'm starting all over again. Right. And uh, the thing about Connecticut was I wasn't going to be, eh, I wasn't doing as much. Because, you know, like I, all I did was work. You know, I worked in New York, come up here, so you work, you come home, you work, you come home, and you don't have time, you're too tired. And the older you get, the more tired you get. Mm -hmm. And um, I met um, this gentleman, uh, comedian also, comedian, um, his name was um, uh, Greg the Greek. And Greg was like, oh, you know, yeah, like a deep voice, you can do comedy, come on, like, Julio, you can do it. And so I decided to do, maybe like a couple of years ago, to do shows up here locally okay. instead of going to New York. Well, I used to go to New York, and by the time I get back here, I'm blown out right. <laughs> from the drive. And you know, like you know, like the, the, the shows at eight o'clock, you do a show, and then you come back up here, and then you're you're dead tired. So right. I produced a few shows, you know, like at the Broadway Comedy Club and stuff like that. And then I got booked a few few times, but you know, I became more disillusioned because now. You know, people want to be more sensitive, politically correct, and I, that wasn't my style. Right. But Greg told me, no, nah, you know, you should do it. So I went and I produced a show in Ansonia, bought them up. We had like five sold out shows. Nice. So, uh, so I, I had the five sold out shows. And we were here, and it was small. It wasn't it was sold out, like 60 people or something like that. Right, but right, right. It, it was a great experience. Because I kind of like got my my feet back again, you know. I got that got that groove. Yep. And you could see the difference because when he first saw me, he says, "Well, I know there's something there, but I don't know if you're that, you know, you're good enough 
right. and I understood what it meant. Right. But as he saw me do the next show, it just got better. Right. And, and he, he was, was like, like, by the time I got through the third show, he was like, ah, oh, <laughs> you definitely, you know, you've been around. Yeah. So it, it's, you know, comedy is a funny thing because it's not like you can have a routine or you can have a joke, or you can have a saying, and it might work. And then sometimes it might not work at all. Depending on where you're at, like you yeah. said, like it might, you, you might gravitate to certain regions. Exactly. Because so, depending on what they want. But and it, you, you, can, you can have a funny joke. Um, I have a, you know, like kind of like a saga with uh, a junkie named Tito Pito and Johnny Colito, you know, and, and, and people like the color of it because, you know, like I kind of emulate and I'm like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah, you know I think I, mean? I came across that one. Yeah, so, so you, 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 people like that. I'm like, that's old. I mean, I had that for 30 years because that's what I, I grew up with. You know, yep. like you're around them. You kind of like want to talk like them. Yep. And, but I never wanted to be like that. Right. I was kind of like, oh. Cautious you know, you, about it. Yeah, but you become judgmental, yes. which is... You know, who am I? I ain't, they ain't any better. I mean, I'm not any better than anybody else. Yeah, yeah, You yeah. know, people have different situations for doing different things. Yeah. And what I came across was, here are junkies that I knew just back in the 70s, you know, 70s, 71, 72, 73, and they had habits $80, $90 a day. Right. Habits. And right. these guys have been doing it for years. Right. Now, I mean, I know you probably wasn't around then, but... Yeah. In 1971, 72, you know how hard it was to make $80 a day? But they used to do it. Yeah. <laughs> so I got to give them credit for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These guys are making, yeah, they, 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 you know, okay, they might sell things, they might, but they, they before six o'clock, they're hustling their $80 to get their bundles yep. so they can stay high yeah, yeah. until the next morning. And right. then the next morning, they do it again. Yeah. And we're talking about guys have been doing this for years. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when people out there, when, when you look at a person that's addicted, you could tell the motive, the addiction because of the motivation right. that would take them to go out and do that. Right. Like, they'll sit there and they're like, you know, they'll tell you a story, all kinds of stories. Right. You know, they'll tell you any kind of story just to get, you know, let me get a dime here. But they'll get a dime here, a dime there, a dime there, a dollar there. But before you know it, they'll gather $80. Or... You know, they're going to get something. They might steal something, resell it. You know, it, 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 it's, it's a hustle. Mm -hmm. I mean, unfortunately, it's, it's not a hustle that would advantages them, but it advantages them for the day. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to get high, and that's what it is. So, yeah. you know, in our society, it's frowned upon. Oh, yeah. you shouldn't be on drugs. Well, who are you? Yeah. <laughs> you, you can't tell them. How do you know? Like, these guys go through whatever they're going through. We don't even know... Sometimes, you know, oh, you come from a good home. That doesn't mean that you won't do drugs. Right. Because, you know, it kind of like it grabs your soul. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, I did drugs. I did, you know, I smoked pot. I did coke. You know, I never did heroin or anything like that. But, you know, I could see where it could take you. Mm. You know, I mean, as drinking, when I was drinking, um, you know, you could see where that takes you. That's just a smaller part. Right. Because now that's drinking is kind of accepted. So there's more help for it. Right, right. Where in heroin it's it's harder because if you're gonna if you're gonna go clean, then if you have money, you can go to a place and the place is different and they keep mm. you away from the environment. Mm -hmm. As for if you come from the ghetto and you go get clean for sixty days, when you finish they throw you out and you go back in the ghetto. What do you think is gonna happen? You're gonna go back to the same, the same, the routine, same routine, and you're gonna get on drugs, and you know this is life, and yep. life, and some of them kick it, very few kick it, mm -hmm. very few, but the ones that do are very strong. I mean, I know guys that kicked it and became pastors. Yeah, you know, and and you know, like through their experience, they know. I mean, you know, these, you know, addi ad addiction. I can't say it's a disease. I don't believe it's a disease. But it's a strong desire that is really hard to break. Right. And, you know, like, and, and people, the only people that can teach you how to break that is somebody that was already on it. Right. Because somebody who never did drugs you can't. can never tell me, well, you know, I know how you feel. No, you don't. Yeah. You have no idea. Yeah. So I never, I never felt that way. So I really can't tell the guy, oh, you should quit. Yeah. Who am I? I'm like, I'm, I'm like well, I think if you decide yourself, where you want to be, right. then that decision should come from you, right, right, right. not from me. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't want to keep 
you know, there's people I know like, you know, like they, they, they'll keep asking you for money, right. and you kind of like, oh, all right, but you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, in your, I'm not gonna give you money and, ch and follow you. Like, right, right. what yeah, are you yeah. doing with that money? Like, do whatever you want with that money. But do the right thing. You but know you what try mean? to and do the right thing. You try, yeah, you try. At but least. the person is still back in the same trap. Be like, well, you know something? I, I'm not doing that no more. Yeah. And you know, I'm, I'm a kind-hearted guy. I don't like people to be out or something. Yeah. I'll give you, you know, like, if I, if you don't have a dollar, I'd rather give you my last dollar right. because I know I'm going to get a dollar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know, maybe, I don't know, I mean, you probably no, think no, the same yeah, way. Yeah, you know? of course, yeah. You know, somebody needs a dollar, yeah, here, yeah, because they look like you're not, there's no way you're going to get the dollar. Oh, yeah. But I'm going to give you the dollar, I'm going to go get my dollar. Maybe yeah. that's God's way of saying, don't worry, just give it, it's going to come back. Yeah. And it does, bro. You and, and, and you've seen it in your life, right? I'm pretty sure you've you've oh, seen man. it happen, oh, all, you know, over I your said, life. I said, head to mouth. Oh, I'm good at that. Yeah. <laughs> head to mouth. You're like when you sit back, you're like, okay, how did I do all this? Yep. I don't have no money. You know, like I, you, know, you save a little bit of money, but it kind of like every time you save money, you need it for something else. Then it goes. Yep. And then you're in the situation, you're like, oh, I need a lot of money. Like, oh, I don't see it happening, and then it happens. Right. I mean, that happened to us just a couple of years ago. We didn't, you know, we had to move, but, you know, it's not cheap to move. Yep. So where did I get eight grand to move? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I did, you know. But, like, and it happened, it worked. And it happens that we worked and we keep going and I'm like, you know, even though my wife sometimes she gets a little, you know, oh, I'm tired. I was like, babe, it's you don't know it. how blessed we are. Yeah, yeah. You got to keep going. It doesn't matter. I'm not, I'm, I, I'd rather live with you under a bridge right. with nothing. right. Then have everything and I'll be with you. Yeah, that's good. So it's like, it doesn't matter to me. I'm yeah. not, I can, I'm a survivor. Right. We're both survivors. She's from the South Bronx. Yeah. So you're you definitely know, a survivor. She's a, you're a survivor. I yeah. mean, more than me. I'm from the Lower East Side, which it was bad, but not like the South Bronx. Uh -huh. South Bronx was, you grew up in the South Bronx. You know how that works. South Bronx was brutal. Bro, it was, yeah, it, that, that, that's a whole nother it was, freaking and, thing. And, the, and through your era, because you, you're pretty young. It got worse. Right. I mean, you think you ha you think, you know, but what you what you're going through is the ultimate. I don't think we would have survived it if we would have had the same, right, the same type of pressure that you do. Because remember, before, if you're in the ghetto, you could see the better life. You know, you could you could you could you could you really literally see somebody living. You know, right. somewhere else, and you know, it's nice and clean, right. and you know, they're getting stuff. In the ghetto, everything comes to them now. Right. You know, now they, they wear $200 pair of shoes, yep. you know, they, they walk around with leathers and you know, live yep. in the projects. They, 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 they have all the comforts, so why would they leave? Right. I have all the comforts of this rich guy. I mean, you know, a drug dealer would make a lot of money still live in the ghetto. Right. Well, why? Because he's comfortable there. Yeah, yeah. He's not. He's not gonna live. It's not like somebody who gets out of the ghetto, experience something, and then stay out. Right. We did that. Right. You know, like you go in. I. I, I can't. Yeah, I can't go back there. No. I, I can't go back there. Yep. And, and and it doesn't make me a better or a bad. It's just that people have to come out to actually see it. Yeah, the perspective changes. And I was lucky because you know, like again, I was a fresh air kid, mm -hmm. so I used to go out all the time. So I understood what mm -hmm. it was to be out there. You know. Mm -hmm. But you know, it's a, it's it's it's. I guess it's something in progress. Nice, bro. I'm 68 years old, and I thought I would never get to this point in comedy. Well, right, and right look now. at this, and 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 look at that, man. God, God is God is faithful, you know. And even regardless, you know, we don't sometimes see him move, right? Right. Be, because. But we're, we're, we're not we're not paying attention to it, but he's right. always moving, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a and then once we start gravitating to it a little bit more, we start seeing, wow, how like you said, how blessed we are and stuff yeah. like that. It's, now, it's, it's subtle. right, it's subtle. Your whole process has been subtle. Mm -hmm. Now you're here and and you had told me, I think you, you got an event coming up now, right? Yeah. So now you got, you're yeah. in Shelton, Connecticut. Um, you, you're gonna you're gonna be doing an event in August, and guess what? We're also gonna be having coffee there. Yeah. So <laughs> if you don't it. know, there's gonna be some great coffee there, and yeah. I'm excited, man. So yeah. what? So so talk well, to us a little bit about this event. Uh, well, I there was a place called the Center Stage Theater in Shelton, Connecticut. Uh, my first 
found it by accident. I, I live in Shelton, right down the road. I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know about it. But I it, went I in there, and um, I, this would be my second event there. It would be not my first, my second event. It's a live stream, pay-per-view. This is going to be August 26th, the last Saturday in August. Showtime is at 7 o'clock. I will be doing what you call a signature comedy show. This is the way it's going to work. Okay. So. You purchase my signature T-shirt, <laughs> which is Who Who Julio the Lamp from Manhattan. Okay. T-shirt is thirty dollars, and with that you get an entrance to the show. Gotcha. So now you have an entrance to the show, but there is a catch, and the catch is you got to wear the T-shirt. <laughs> so you got to wear the T-shirt to the show. That's what makes it a signature shirt. Okay. And um, you know, of course, for all the folks that can't make it. That you can still catch me live on the pay-per-view, the live stream, which is on TicketLife.com. And Ticket Life, Life is spelled L-Y-F-E. Oh, gotcha. So when they go to TicketLife.com, you can purchase it. It's only $10. And uh, you can watch me live from your device, TV, your phone. And if you, if you still miss it, there's no excuse now. It's on demand. <laughs> so you can catch it on demand. Go on, go on the site again. They go on the site. And you know, even if you even if you buy it now for the live, if you miss the live, you can still catch the demand. Okay, it's, cool. It stays on with you for a year. Oh, nice, perfect. So I'm gonna make sure to have all the all the the links. Yeah. Everything is gonna be in the description of this video. Mm -hmm. Um, for the ticket life, yes. how to buy a ticket. Yes. Um, and for all you folks that would like uh, a T-shirt, and you know, like for the entrance, um, if you can just. Text me or email me, and my email is hoohooholioproductions at gmail.com, and you just just put the order in. You don't have to pay for anything, and let me know what size you want so I know, you know exactly what to have. So I figured two weeks before the show, I would deliver your T-shirts, or I'll mail them to you, or whatever, you know, any yeah. way you want. I just wanted to. Yeah. Make sure, but that's cool because then that means all the audience, everybody there is going to be all dressed up. Everybody's going to that, be. That's why it's a signature it's, show because everybody's going to be wearing absolutely. the. Uh, okay, gotcha. We're gonna be wearing nice, the bro. This, this sounds this sounds cool, man. Yeah. And and um, <laughs> like I said, bro, it's it's been a pleasure to to have you here. Thank you. Um, uh, it's it's been some time that I'm kicking up the the episodes again. Okay. Um, I was going through the process with the coffee stuff, so I'm I'm super excited about that too. Nice. Thank you for the opportunity, also. Oh, absolutely. Um, absolutely. so we can have uh, yeah, uh, today's we, sponsor, exactly. also at that at that show. What you so is it comedy con cafe or something comedy, like that? Yeah, matter of fact, uh, comedy con cafe is the show that I thought up when I met you know this gentleman here, yeah. Jonathan, and um, I'm like, sorry, matter of fact, I don't even know his last name. I just call him Jonathan Cafe. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Comedy con cafe, which you know we're bilingual anyway, yep. kind of like you know Spanglish. Yep. So comedy con cafe is you know like where, where we can talk about while we're having coffee, we could talk about comedy. Maybe right. bring somebody in and right. you know talk to them and see what they're doing. And yep. you know, because my plans are to showcase comedians that been out there for a while that never been showcased before. Yeah. And I want to give them the opportunity to always make money on their show. Yeah. So not you know most of the time, like I said before, uh, most comedians only show you two or three minutes, yeah. and that's all you want to see. Yeah. But in this case, I want to showcase their whole routine, nice. and then that way they can show it to people to see what they're about, and at the same time they can monetize the same show at least up to a year. Right. Gotcha. So and, and that, that could be a residual. Like, yeah, it's a residual. residual exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what is, it is. It'll be a residual for them. So you know, like. All you comedians out there that you know that need to be showcased, as long as you you you're motivated to promote yourself, right. this is a great opportunity to make extra money on your one routine. So yeah. you know we can give you, I give you, I give you the showcase. You ain't gotta like the opportunities come up. there. You're the, opportunities the opportunities there, there. You absolutely. Just gotta grab it and take and, it and there's and there's a lot of guys out there that are, that are excellent. It's just that we never heard of them. We never right. see them because, you know, like they're good enough. The problem is is that, you know, they're not on TV. Right. I mean, you know the Dave Chappelle's, you know the Kevin Hart's, you know, yeah. you know them guys because they're on TV. Right. But if they wasn't on TV, would you know them? Yeah. Probably not. Yeah. You know, because Dave Chappelle, well, he's from D.C., but, you know, he lives in Ohio. Right. Uh, you get Kevin Hart from Philadelphia. So if you're not in that area, you're not going to know who they are. Right, right, right. I mean, of course, with social media now, you get to know more people. But again, even social media, they only show 
two, three minutes. Yeah, even seconds. Sometimes. Even seconds. Even so, you know, steps. like it's you, you want to see a full-fledged comedian go out and really deliver yep. what he loves to do. Right. And most comedians do it because they love it because the money is never good yeah. until you make it, until you either you could become the entrepreneur to make the money or, you know, somebody is lucky enough to sign you and right. give you money up front. And even that's a problem, you know, you know, Dave Chappelle, what happened to him? Yeah. So, you know, like it, it, it's his own thing. But this time I'm trying to showcase where, you know, you could be your own independent. I'm not there to take nothing from you. I'm here to give you something. Mm -hmm. So, and cool, I, I've yeah, been thinking time. about that. I've been thinking about that a lot. And, you know, I think... Comedians got a, a, a bad deal in the sense of entertainment, which is probably the hardest part of the entertainment business because right. it's a you know it's a, it's a tough business, and a lot of these guys they become good, and after a while you quit, right? Because you know not, what are you gonna do? I mean, you can't you got to get a job, you gotta right. like you gotta make a living, and a lot of these guys can't make a living, so they work and they do their stuff and they do other things, and yeah. that is tough. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I did. I've been doing it for 36 years. Yeah. Believe me, I know. It's like, it is tough because you love the art. Right. You love that. I love that. That's passion for me. That's, That's like, it's a great thing. So Nice, bro. I'm, I'm excited thank about you, thank this. Thank you so much for having me over. I appreciate no, it. No, no, bro. It's it's uh, It's been a pleasure, bro, to, yeah. to meet you and, and connect with you, yeah. um, to get you on the show yeah. so we can also showcase you and we can share this video, you know right. what I'm saying, to... To your friends and stuff like that, let them know about the event that's coming out and out here locally in Shelton, Connecticut, wow. where our studio's at as well. Um, but I want to thank you again for for coming in, yeah. for being on the show. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your transparency. You. Um, we celebrate you for your hard work and all the stuff that you've been doing. And I and I know and I pray that you know these next couple of years are going to be some great years for you, bro. Not only for you, for your wife, uh -huh. and and for the stuff that you're going to do. And I'm looking forward to to see it grow. You know what I mean? Thank you. And thank um, you so much. Um, thank you, everybody, for watching. All the information is going to be in the description of the video. And like every Coffee Break episode, never settle with being good when you have meant to be great. See you later. Catch you in the next one.